Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Mass Effect Legendary Edition. I'm your host, Lasan Fay, and well, today, since this is really kind of the first time we get to fully explore the ship, um, that's what I want to do. I can't believe the Council won't help. Come on, here. Really? If Thestia was lost and Earth hadn't been touched yet, it could be damn sure we'd be guarding our own borders. Yeah, not wrong. Come Anyways, on, the Alliance has found a new Cerberus lab on Sanctum. Admiral Hackett would like you to investigate. Great, wonderful. We'll deal with that in a minute. <laughs> or, well, more than a minute. Anywho, in here. Let's say hi, Joker. Hey, Commander. You know, I had my doubts about the Council. But after years of ignoring your warnings, they're finally willing to step up and tell you they just can't help. Yeah. They've spent years denying the threat. You think they'd be prepared now? I was kind of hoping that maybe they were planning in secret and just not telling you about it because, you know, Cerberus. Well, let me know if you want me to get them on the channel and then hang up on them. You know, for old time's sake. Sure. I'll keep that in mind. Thanks, Joker. Oh, boy. Alrighty, um... Commander, you've got a new message at your private terminal. Okay, fine. I'll answer it then. Special Ops. Shepard. Alliance forces are stretched thin across the galaxy. We need your specific talents for a series of ops. These missions will open doors to the Alliance in places we can't touch through conventional means. We'll deploy our operatives to hold point after you've completed your objectives. I need you to head to a Cerberus lab on the planet Sanctum. I'll brief you when you're inbound. Hack it. Commander Shepard, this letter formally acknowledges that your reinstatement into the Alliance Navy per Admiral David Anderson's recent verbal communication under Emergency War Power Regulation uh, 903.5. You are hereby authorized to assume command of the Normandy SR-2. You are directed to begin interdiction operations against any and all enemies posing a threat to Earth, its colonies, and its allies. Furthermore, you are granted diplomatic authority to establish treaties with non-human races as required to support your mission. Sincerely, Admiral Stephen Hackett. Thank you, Hackett. Emergency flash traffic. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a galaxy-wide alert for all human territories. Fleet Admiral Hackett has declared threat condition Saber 1. Enemy presence confirmed in Soul System. Earth under Reaper attack. All Alliance military personnel are directed to evacuate Soul System at first available opportunity. Do not attempt Earth approach. Heavy enemy resistance reported. Repeat, do not attempt Earth approach. Further instructions to follow on coded channel Crimson Tacit. Uh, Earth-based Alliance personnel unable to evacuate are directed to commence any and all necessary countermeasures. All remaining Alliance personnel outside Seoul Theater are directed to muster at pre-appointed staging areas and commence offensive combat operations at first available opportunity. In absence of further instruction, independent action is authorized. Lovely. K9. Dear Commander Shepard, uh, I was... A contractor working on the Normandy's haptic interface when it was in dry dock. Your VI ED emailed me to let me know I left my dog mech on board. I'm all the way out in Terra Nova now and would hate for you to go a million clicks out of your way to drop off my dog. Please just take care of her. She likes exploring, sniffing chemical trails, and 750 volt outlets. Thank you and sorry for the trouble. I promise she won't be too much of a headache. I'm sure she will. A uh, new article on the Porian Fleet by Ruxius Relius. Citadel, where is the Quarian fleet? The latest intelligence shows that the Reapers are taking system after system at a feverish pace. Members of all races are fleeing their stations, colonies, and in some cases, their homeworlds. This kind of forced exodus might seem especially familiar to the nomadic Quarians who were pushed off their homeworld by the synthetic Geth centuries ago. But as the galaxy pushes back against the Reapers, the Quarians are conspicuously absent. Turian and Alliance out spokespeople cannot provide the fleet's current location. They say they have other concerns at the moment. Whatever the Quarians are up to, they want it kept secret from the Council. After re a refueling stop at Elian, the fleet left no stated destination, and there are also reports of a galaxy-wide call for all young adult Quarians to abandon their pilgrimages and rejoin the fleet. Greedy and short-sighted powers will always try to gain the upper hand in times of galactic crisis. We can only hope that whatever the Quarians are planning does not interfere with the only thing that should matter, stopping the Reapers. From Edie. 
While we were in dry dock, Joker suggested a small welcoming gift would be appropriate to have on hand should you be reinstated as commanding officer. As the ship does not have the capacity to accommodate the dancers he suggested, I chose something from the Official Systems Alliance catalog. Soldiers who have held it in seven designation for five years or more are entitled to a commemorative hooded jacket for wear on off-duty hours. You will find it among the, the selection of casual clothing in your cabin. You have an upgrade waiting. Some of the data you found allowed me to research and upgrade for you. Simply access the terminal in Dr. Tassoni's office at your convenience. Uh, priority mission, Eden Prime. We will do this soon. Uh, Commander, Cerberus has attacked Eden Prime and is now occupying the colony. Alliance forces are stretched too thin right now to attempt to liberate the colony, but we've been doing what we can to covertly aid the local resistance. In the process, we've learned that Cerberus has uncovered a major Prothean artifact. We don't know what it is, but it appears to be the reason for the attack on the colony. We need you to infiltrate the colony and recover the artifact. Yep, we'll get to that. Alright, but first. Well, I want to be comfy. So, hoodie time. Okay, casual. There we go. Oh, I miss my fish. Um, so, I'm actually re-recording this episode because, well, OBS decided not to record my game audio for a little bit for unknown reasons. And so yeah, since this is a very RPG heavy game, I am re-recording. And also because y'all have seen my reactions to this stuff before. Commander Shepard, it's a pleasure to see you again. You're the drone from the Shadow Brokers ship. Dr. Tassoni now refers to me as Glyph instead of Info Drone. 95% of the time. If you have a moment, I'd like to draw your attention to a terminal in her office. Okay. It analyzes information packages. If you find any useful data, I can research upgrades for you. And what should I be looking for? I'll inform you if you found relevant data. When you do, return to this terminal for your choices. Okay. In the meantime, Dr. Tassoni would like to speak with you. Have a pleasant day. Thanks, Cliff. Meeting with the council didn't go too well, huh? It was less than ideal. Yeah, Indeed. That's a shocker. Whole worlds are being lost to the Reapers. What more will it take? Who knows? Hell, maybe the council's just taking petty revenge for Shepard hanging up on them all those years ago. Wait, Shepard did what? Oh, sorry. I think we're going through some dark matter. <laughs> Hello? Hello? All right. Intel terminal, uh, armor mod kit. Ammo capacity, shields, ammo capacity. That is almost always helpful. Looks like you brought more than just that drone from your ship. A few things were necessary. I'd be a very silent shadow broker without data feeds. So you have access to your resources? What I can get, we'll need it to research this Prothean device. Until we understand precisely what it does, it's far too dangerous to use. Okay. Did the Protheans actually complete this weapon? You mean, will it work? They wouldn't have poured their last resources into this device if they thought otherwise. But we really need to find out just what kind of weapon they left us. Agreed. It'd be nice to know we're not kids playing around with a loaded gun. Absolutely. The damage it could cause if it backfired is unthinkable. People were finally starting to listen before the Reapers came. If we'd had a little more time, maybe Earth wouldn't. I'm sorry. I understand if you don't want to talk about it. Well, thanks. The thought means a lot, Liara. Thanks. You're welcome. And since I didn't mention it before, it's good to be back, Shepard. Great. Great. Wonderful. This terminal contains non-essential correspondence from your allied forces. All right. Dr. Tassoni has granted you access. Glyph, remind me to clean up these old nodes. Perhaps reviewing them will lead to something useful for the Prothean device. 2171, the University of Ceres agreed to sponsor me at the Prothean dig on Dretirop. Very exciting. Professor Hennel is heading the expedition herself. Maybe I can even ask her for her opinion on my thesis outline. Attachment thesis on Prothean first contact protocols. 
I believe Dr. Joshuan was right to suggest that the Prothean artifacts we unearthed are from the Third Age, not the Fourth. What an embarrassing mistake. At least he seemed to approve of the rest of the paper. Paper on a comparison of Prothean technology to modern Asari circuit logic. I'm going on the Theorem Expedition. I never thought I'd gain permission to visit the Prothean ruins there, but the adversity of Ceres must have secured the funding after all. Now to pack. Paper on the end of the Prothean Empire. Goodness, this human shepherd has the key to comprehending the Protheans on an instinctual subconscious level. If only I could have been there when the commander touched the beacon on Eden Prime. I'll try to learn more about this cipher on board the Normandy. The involvement of the Reapers is troubling, to say the least. Paper on the end of the Prothean Empire with correction notes. And I reviewed the old Shatterbroker's fo footage of the Collectors. It's chilling to know that they're the Protheans' husks. At least nothing sentient could possibly remain what after what the Reapers did to them. Attachment paper on Prothean biology. A message from Operative Baron to the broker. I made contact with Tazik yesterday. The look on his face was priceless. He's not happy. You put me in charge of scouting the Terminus system, but he's doing a good job of keeping us alive. I've never seen so many pirates and mercs on edge. The black market's unreliable and it's getting harder to make contact with suppliers. The Alliance won't be able to rely on it as a source of crucible materials for long. If if things get worse, some of the other operatives think we should cut our losses now, but I just keep asking, when did the odds ever stop the broker? Baron. P.S. I hope you finally got our little friend Droney to stop saying shadow and broker out loud in the same sentence to anyone in sight. Yeah. Hello uh, again, Shepard. I guess we'll How ask. What do you know about this Protean artifact? Very little. We're fortunate enough data survived to piece together the blueprints. Decoding them will require as many specialists as we can find. It's that high tech? I'd have killed for a glimpse of it during graduate school. Gosh, that is still very washed out. Um. So is that drone your new secretary? Glyph is a VI shell that indexes my search functions on the data feeds. I couldn't work without it. Although I'm lucky Edie let Glyph on board after it tried to rewrite her scheduled tasks. I was merely attempting to standardize the ship's automated systems to our own, Dr. Tassoni. Yes, that's precisely why you're confined to the cabin. Okay. What's been happening with you as the broker, Liara? It's been exciting. The old broker's ship, impressive, but it was never meant to be space-worthy. Which meant the elusive man eventually tracked me down on Hagalaz. What happened? I knew he was coming. Ferran and I loaded as much of the ship's specialized hardware onto a shuttle as we could. We got away from Cerberus's ships after arranging an appropriate distraction. And... What kind of distraction? Sending the broker's ship exploding into a Cerberus cruiser. I don't think the elusive man expected me to give up my resources in such a spectacular fashion. Can you still operate as the broker without the ship? Well, I couldn't let the elusive man have it. I saved what was crucial. My network of agents is intact, although the Reapers have taken a toll on their numbers. It's taking a while to reestablish contact. So where is Farron if you two escaped? Yeah. He convinced well. me he was recovered enough to work, and I do need more agents. Agent Farron didn't report any injuries during his last call to your doctor. True. Given what he survived, I should probably worry less. Indeed. All right, so anything else? What have you been up to since we last saw each other? Since you helped me defeat the Shadow Broker, I started looking for defenses against the Reapers. The Protheans were the only ones with substantial information on them. The older civilizations barely had records. I knew the elusive man was hunting for the same thing when our agents began crossing paths. Like on Mars? I thought I'd covered my tracks, but he had surveillance there all along. All right. We'll talk later, Liara. Of course. Cool. Thanks, Liara. Alrighty. Enjoy your day. Thanks, Glyph. Right. I have not recruited Garrus yet. Chuckless. Commander. How are you? Everything okay down here, Doctor? The Alliance team cleaned up and restocked, but it's still my old med bay. Yep. Feels like home. Welcome back. Thank you. Let's waste no time. If I may, I'd like to examine you. Uh, what? Nothing wrong with me, is there? No, but we should keep an eye on all those cybernetic implants Cerberus grafted into you. Expensive stuff, bringing me back. And worth every penny. Let's just make sure everything is okay. Yeah... Guess a checkup never hurts. Just no scalpel this time, Doc. 
Alas, to my great disappointment, it is nothing invasive. <laughs> I'm just going to run some diagnostics on your implants, and it'll take a few readings. Actually, speaking Good. of, where are your the implants scars? Your implants are showing little sign of rejection. Just keep up that positive outlook of yours, Commander, and your scars shouldn't return. Okay, but I... That's it. You're the picture of health. Kind of wanted the scars, you know, chicks dig scars, all that jazz. How's our inventory of meds? The med bay was fully stocked before you left Earth. We should be good for a long time, even given the amount of fire you take each day. Okay. Do you ever regret working for Cerberus? We didn't work for them. We used them. If I were to feel anything, it would be guilt. We took their money, took their best people, took their best ship. We used them to defeat the Collectors, and now we are using their resources against them. So no, I don't regret it one bit. That's a good way of thinking about it. You've never mentioned any of your family. None to speak of, really. I'm the last of a prestigious line of medical professionals. The Alliance is my spouse, and you're all my children. I'm blessed with many close friends. But with each Alliance vessel taken, I lose one or two. We need to end this war. Agreed. Uh, All right. I'll see you around, Doctor. Thank you. Take care, Shepard. All right. So there is that. I don't think... Yeah. Uh, engineering. <clears throat> right, right. <gasps> boo, 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 come here. Boo, <gasps> yay, got you. I found you, don't worry, you'll be safe. Yay! I got my hamster back. <sighs> At least I got one of my pets. <laughs> All right, Adams. Commander, welcome back to the Normandy. Or maybe you should be saying that to me. Engineer Adams, what are you doing here? I was put in charge of the drive core retrofits. My experience on the Normandy SR-1 made me an obvious choice. So, what do you think of our SR-2? She's incredible. If there's one nice thing I can say about Cerberus, it's that they know how to build a ship. And about that, Cerberus, I mean. I owe you an apology. How so? Back when you got this ship, Dr. Chalk was contacting me, asking me to help with your mission against the Collectors. I refused. I didn't have your back, and I'm sorry for that. Why didn't you join us? I saw what happened to you when the Normandy went down. Yeah. I didn't trust that it was really you, and I certainly didn't trust Cerberus. Don't blame also, me for as that. as an officer of the Alliance, I don't just leave my post, you know? Yep, so. Your Alliance first. That's the way it should be. Thank you, Commander. Glad to be aboard. All right. Is your family okay? My parents are serving on Viridian Zenith, an Alliance agricultural vessel. My sister is a navigator on the SSV Benjamin Davis. Happy to report that both vessels are safely under Hackett's command. Good. Does the new Normandy stack up to the old SR-1? <laughs> stack up? It blows <laughs> the old ship away. The Tantalus drive core has been completely overhauled. The SR-2 might be nearly twice the size, but the new drive core is three times bigger. This ship can fly. That said, Indeed. Cerberus isn't too high on safety. If pushed past her limits, this core would vent into engineering. Guess it gives my team incentive to keep her well balanced during a firefight. Indeed. Do your job or get vaporized. Pretty much. I noticed you upgraded the kinetic barriers with cyclonic technology. Yep. Should help reduce the draw when under missile fire. Hopefully that means fewer vaporized engineers. The IES stealth system is significantly improved. It can handle a higher blue shift of our emissions. Meaning? And that means... We should be able to drop out of FTL without triggering every sensor in range. Very handy for stealth reconnaissance. So good. All in all, the Normandy is a marvel of engineering. Great. 
What do you think of Edie? We had a good talk during the retrofit. A little strange at first, talking shop with an AI. AI? I thought Edie posed as a VI to keep the likes of you from unplugging her. Yeah, but I saw through her. Have you seen her hardware? Processing power is off the charts. And then there were the problems that kept fixing themselves. If I hadn't had her pegged, I would have sworn I was losing it. You never <laughs> expressed any skepticism, Lieutenant Adams. I figured I'd better play it safe with the Cerberus AI, Edie. No offense. I like the little GLaDOS. As long as you keep your fingers out of my cognizance processors. Camera zoom. <laughs> In the beginning, sort of I tried disconnecting her from key processes without giving myself away. Easier said than done. But Joker seemed to trust her. And in time, I saw her advantages. Even grew to like her. All right. Well. Carry on, Adams. Aye, aye, sir. All right. Well. Yay. And we got one more level in the shuttle bay. Ah, there's the K-9. Cortez! Lieutenant Steve Cortez, shuttle pilot. We've got news about our supply chains, Commander. Nice to meet you, Lieutenant. What's going on? Sorry to just jump in, Commander. There's so much to be done, I get caught up in the tasks at hand. He's always like that. You need to chill out, Esteban. So you do care, Mr. Vega? Or is that the Cerveza talking again? So what's happening with our supply chains, Lieutenant? Alliance procurement chains are in chaos, but the Citadel's economy is still running. I can network to Citadel retailers. You can view inventory and make purchases right from this console. At market. When I network to a new store, I'll let you know. It does cost more to coordinate delivery to the Normandy, so it's cheaper to buy supplies when you're there. So you're my shuttle pilot, but you're setting up procurement chains? I wasn't assigned as Normandy's pilot. Not much need for one on a dry dock ship. Indeed. I was overseeing the retrofit of the cargo hold. I'm quite familiar with the operation and maintenance of the UT-47 Kodiak and the M-44 Hammerhead. In my experience, it made sense for me to take over as shuttle pilot when we left Earth. Yep. Especially given Mr. Vega's love of mid-air collisions. Indeed, I'd rather have you the as the pilot. Pateo. I'm also responsible for logistics, making sure the armory and shuttle are properly stocked and maintained. Totally fair. How long have you been with the Alliance? About ten years. I enlisted in First Fleet serving on the SSV Hawking, flying F-61 Tridents mostly. I love the Trident, and practically dances in low atmo. I spent as much time tinkering on my bird as flying her. Got a bit of a reputation. So, you can fly fighters and fix them? Yeah. And I got a knack for procurement, too. They were grooming me for CAG, but my skill set made me more valuable commanding a flight deck. They assigned me to the Normandy retrofit team about five months ago to oversee all cargo bay modifications. Okay. What happened to the M44 Hammerhead? <laughs> May as well ask. I was sent to the tech labs for a retrofit. To afford mobility with such a small ESO core, it's designed sacrificed armor plating. The lab engineers are trying to improve that. After yeah. the Reaper invasion, those labs are probably just a pile of rubble. Probably. The Kodiak seems a bit different. Good eyes, Commander. This is the UT-47A Kodiak. It's got an upgraded ESO core and prototype stealth technology based on the Normandy design. For quick drops, I can get you in and out virtually undetected. Oh, she flies see. like a brick. Caution That's why you need now? a good pilot. Do you maintain this armory? Just cut that. I share that duty with our illustrious Mr. Vega. Though I believe the only weapon he really cares to maintain is himself. You know you love the show, Esteban. <laughs> the first retrofit we did was to move the armory down from deck two. I'm not sure what Cerberus engineers were thinking. Now you get off the elevator, pick your gear, and head right into the shuttle. Just like the original Normandy. Welcome back yeah. to the Alliance, Commander. Like, there, I could see potential reasons for both because Deck 2 at the time also had the research and development area. And so, you know, having what you wanted to experiment on be right by would have also been helpful. You were stationed on Earth. Do you have family there? I'm an only child. Lost my parents years ago. I had a husband back when I was stationed at Ferris Fields. The collectors took out the whole colony. Which we heard about. I'd rather not talk about it. Yeah. Keep up the hard work, but don't kill yourself. Yes, Commander. Yeah, we heard about Ferris Fields from passive conversation. Um, 
Yes, did remember correctly that I do have warship models around about here. They do! They say caution now, rather than... Because I want to say, they originally said danger. Which I definitely remember misreading as dancer and was very confused. You two had passed... Oh no, it says danger back here. Is it just, it's covered? Nope. That spot's not covered on here, but it is not written there. Interesting. Okay, anyways, hi, James. There you go. Hey, Shepard. How'd it go with the castle? About as well as expected. Same as usual. Non-committal. Unhelpful. Bet they still wanted you to help them out, no? Always. Yeah. We're gonna rescue a Turian Primarch. Palavan. <sighs> Sounds like fun. Never been to the Turian homeworld. <sighs> you down here for a reason? <sighs> Just came down to talk. <clears throat> Great. <clears throat> Not sure what there is to talk about. <clears throat> you already know my service record. Hmm, no. I don't, actually. I didn't have access to personnel records when we met. Right. Forgot about that. Well... Think you can dance and talk at the same time? Sure. I think I can handle it. Okay, loco. Let's dance. Don't push your luck, Vega. With age comes wisdom. And rank. Ha! You sound like my old CO. Ha, ha. Oh, yeah. yeah? And who was that? Captain Tony. He was a hard-ass son of a bitch, but a good leader. <laughs> nice. <clears throat> what do you mean, was? Died with most of my squad, protecting a civilian colony from a collector attack. And the colony? It was either them or the intel we had on the collectors. Intel we could have used to destroy them. I chose the intel. Sorry. That's a tough call. Yeah. The best part was, we didn't really need the intel in the end. No man, you've you got a bloody nose. you the galaxy by taking down the entire Collector homeworld. <sighs> you didn't know. You can't blame yourself, Vega. Who says I'm blaming myself? I do. You are. I do. You a shrink too? Nope. But that stunt back on Mars was reckless. You're lucky to be alive. So? So? Maybe you don't care if you live or die. Or maybe. <clears throat> I'm just willing to do whatever the fuck it takes to end this goddamn war. <clears throat> maybe you are. But if you're half as good as I think you are, we need you alive. Thanks for the pep talk. Yep. Anytime. Hey. Thanks for the dance, Loco. Loco, huh? I yeah. can think of worse things to call you. As long as you remember who's in charge, you can call me whatever you want. You oh, can, I won't forget. You can call me Al, just don't call me late to dinner. That's what that makes me think of every single time. All right, cool. Well, let's head up here. Oh, right. We haven't really talked Commander, to you. Come to check on your new recruit. Oh, yeah. Just wanted to see how you were doing. Still trying to get my bearings. When I was working on the Normandy's upgrades, I left at the end of the day. I didn't even have a toothbrush or a change of clothing until I made some emergency purchases on the Citadel. 
Next time you need something, just ask. We're all in this together. Oh, it, it, it's no trouble, Commander. I'm sure you have larger concerns. We can put in a requisition order. My toothbrush is a Scission Promark IV. It uses tiny mass effect fields to break up plaque and massage the gums. It costs 6,000 credits. Uh-huh. Okay. Yeah, you're on your yeah. own. <laughs> you're on your own with that. In any event, I appreciate you giving me the chance to stay. Was sure. there anything else? Um... How'd you end up in the military anyway? Let's ask. My family didn't have money for university. When the Alliance saw my aptitude scores, they offered me a full scholarship. Nice. I served my required years after graduation and decided to stay. I really like the challenges of the lab. Fair. Although, I'm sure I'll grow to love frontline service as well. I'm surprised Kay. you're worrying about a toothbrush. We've got bigger problems right now. Oh, believe me. Seeing the Reapers on Earth was terrifying. But I won't help anybody by bursting into tears here in the CIC, will I? Being here on the Normandy helps. If anyone in the galaxy can stop the Reapers, it's you. And if flagging your messages and managing strategic intel helps you in any way, then it's worth it. Okay. You worked in Alliance R&D? Yes. You'd think quantum entanglement would make communication easy, but imagine incorporating multiple incoming sources and then networking them with extrapolations of time lag data to construct a coherent situation GUI. It's an exciting challenge. Um, for me, anyway. It's okay, I know other people who would actually be really excited for those types of challenges, so you're good. Where are you from originally? A colony in the Terminus systems, actually. Though I studied on Earth, at Oxford. My parents were from London. They loved Earth, but they wanted the freedom a colony life could offer. Even if that freedom has its share of danger. If I recall correctly, you grew up on Mindwar. Yeah, yeah. Given what happened to Earth, I don't think we can count on anywhere being safe right now. Quite true, Commander. Okay. Carry on, Specialist. All right, well, I think I'm gonna go ahead and leave this episode here. I wanna thank you all so much for tuning into this episode. And in the meantime, in between time, take care, have fun, and happy trails.